So have you ever watched a movie where you get all the way to the end and there's some kind of a twist ending and then the second time you watch the movie, now that you know the ending, there's all these things that you didn't see before that you're like, oh my God, that makes sense now. That is exactly what this class is like. So the purpose of this video is to let you a little bit know what the ending is. So as you're going along, you realize what's important because you know where it's going to end up. So one of the first things you're going to learn, obviously, is the difference between anatomy and physiology. Anatomy is the study of structure. Physiology is the study of function. Anatomy, you're going to study most of that in lab, especially gross anatomy, which is big things that you can see and touch. In lecture, you're going to learn more about microanatomy, which is just the parts that are small that you can't see, and physiology. There's also a lot of essential vocabulary in this chapter, including regional terms and directional terms. Now the reason that you are learning this is because for the rest of the class, these regional terms and directional terms are going to be used in every single chapter. So for example, you're going to learn the word superior means higher, inferior means lower. You're going to learn that orbital means I. So when you get to the skeletal chapter, if you know superior means higher, orbital means I, then learning the term superior orbital fissure is not difficult. If you don't know those things, it's like you're reading French and you don't speak French. So I do have advice for how to study those. I have a playlist called Study Tips. I have some videos on there already about how to study regional terms, and I'm hoping to make a video about directional terms soon. You're also going to learn about homeostasis and feedback loops. So homeostasis, stasis means to stay, homeo means the same. So it's the fact that you can keep your temperature at a stable level, your blood sugar, your blood sodium. All of these variables within you have to stay at a constant level to keep you alive. And feedback loops are how your body is able to maintain homeostasis. Homeostatic control mechanisms break down, disease is going to occur. So that's why we study this, because how do you understand why something is broken if you don't know how it functions normally? So as I said before, anatomy is the study of structure, the names of things. Physiology is the study of function. We study anatomy so that we have the vocabulary by which we can discuss the function. So to understand what I mean when I say that, let's think about the anatomy and physiology of a fork. The anatomy is that it has a handle and prongs. The physiology is that it has a handle so I can hold it and prongs so that I can pierce things with it while I am holding it. If you didn't know what a handle was or prongs were or that a fork even existed at all, you would have a very hard time trying to understand that sentence. And that is exactly what happens to students when they're trying to study A and P and they're not studying in the right order. So what do I mean by the right order? I mean, you want to learn your gross anatomy and your microanatomy so that you can understand your physiology. So even before you have your lecture on something, you should be in your textbook trying to look for the gross anatomy and the microanatomy terms. Think, I'm looking for characters and settings so that I can understand the story. So there's a few things I left out from this chapter. One I left out because I'm going to talk about it later and some I left out because I didn't think they were important to my overall goal of helping you understand where the story is headed. But as I was editing this, I realized I'm an idiot. Of course they're important. They're in chapter one. Everything in this chapter is here because it is a foundational concept that is necessary to help you understand the rest of the book. So what I left out was necessary life functions and survival needs. So necessary life functions are things that your body is doing like maintaining boundaries, digesting, 
movement, anything that is necessary to keep you alive, just like it sounds. A survival need is some kind of external condition or input that must be met in order to keep you alive. For example, water, oxygen, nutrients, temperature. So the reason I decided to include this is because this is what you need to think about when you're studying physiology. Physiology is all about processes, and when you're learning those processes, there can be a lot of steps for what specifically is happening, but before you even think about the steps, you need to identify why. What is the point of this process? What is my body even trying to do? The point of the process is always going to be something that contributes to one of your necessary life functions or meeting your survival needs in one way or another. So for example, the point of this process is to elevate my temperature. Your body temperature staying within a set range is a survival need. The point of this process is to allow my bones to grow. Growth is a necessary life function. The point of this process is to create a fibrin mesh, which stops me from bleeding. I want to create a fiber mesh that'll stop me from bleeding because if I don't, I will no longer be able to transport oxygen and nutrients around my body. Oxygen and nutrients are a survival need. Without them, my cells are going to die. So once you get to the systems, this is how you need to think about it. But write this down because you're 100% going to forget it by the time you get to that point. Because one, understanding is not the same as remembering. Never think that just because you understood something means you're going to remember it later. Because that's just not how the human brain works. And two, it's going to be a while before you get into the systems. Let me explain why. Uh, chapter 2 is going to be a chemistry review, chapter 3 is going to be a biology review, In chapter 4 you're going to learn about histology, the study of tissues. That is also your second lab. Your first lab will be your regional directional terms, other important vocab from chapter 1. Your second lab will be histology. So the first chapter where you actually even talk about an organ system is chapter 5. Why is that? So it goes back to something from chapter one that I didn't talk about. So this is the structural levels of organization. You know, the fact that atoms are the smallest unit of matter. They come together to become molecules. Molecules make up organelles. Organelles make up cells. A group of cells working together to perform a common function is a tissue. Multiple tissue types coming together to perform a common function is an organ. For every chapter, for the rest of the book, you're going to be zooming in and out along those structural levels of organization. So for every organ system, you're going to be thinking about the tissues, the biology, the chemistry. If you don't have the basic vocabulary to do with chemistry and biology and histology, there's no way you can understand how an organ system functions. So that is why they make you go through all this first. So make sure you're paying attention and you're not just worried about, hey, like what is my professor gonna test me on? Because the people that wrote your textbook, they included every single topic in those chapters because they know it comes up later in the book. All right, that's all I have to say for now on this topic. I hope there was something in here you can take with you that you found helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.